I'm about to show you how to contour your face in five easy steps. I'm making this super easy to understand. There's no messing around with loads of products. We're using only one product and I'm gonna be showing you exactly where you should apply, how you should apply it, why you should apply it there, and also how you blend it. So I'm making it really easy. This is so honestly beginner friendly. If you have no idea about contouring, super easy. If you just wanna refresh your skills or you wanna learn something different, maybe your way of contouring is slightly different. So let's get started. Now, I only have my base on as normal, like I have my foundation on and I only have a bit of powder on my under eyes. Everywhere else I don't have powder currently. So no bronzer, no blush anywhere, not on the nose, nothing. So we're gonna go in with a product which is super easy to use. And you, to be honest, you can use any kind of product that's similar to this. I'm using the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick in dark and it's just really easy because one you've got like a brush on one side if you want to use it and then the other you have obviously your stick here i don't always use a brush because i find it's a little bit kind of flat and dense for me sometimes i like something which is a bit more easy to blend with so even though this is five steps this isn't five steps in the sense of like oh i have to go through that entire process to get to the end it's really easy you can pick whichever steps you want out of this the only one that would always take place is step five so i'm going to start off with step one what we wanna do here is basically sculpt the cheekbone here. Even if you don't feel like you have that natural indent there and you don't see it, we all actually have it, but some are more hidden than others. So what we really wanna do is give the illusion of that cheekbone kind of looking a bit more, like just popping a little bit more. So the trick is, is you wanna go just at the top of the ear, not right at the top, because it, right at the top would be right there and that would be too high for me. But I'd say the top section of the ear, so right there. So I'd put your finger right there so that you can only see the top of the ear past your finger and that's where you would start. So from this point, we wanna basically apply a little line and we're not gonna go all the way in. I know you see these videos and these pictures of people contouring and it can look really crazy because it's all over the face. We don't wanna do that, we wanna make it really simple. So we're gonna get our little stick here. We're gonna go from that section where I mentioned and we're gonna just take it right there. That's literally all we're gonna do. So we're gonna do this on the other side as well. So remember we said right here. There you go. Can you see by doing that little measurement there, just doing that kind of like, just that little trick of the finger, it ensures that you get a symmetrical finish. Now we know that this is the same on either side and it's basically completely symmetrical. So that is our first step. We're gonna leave that as it is and the reason being is because this particular product, you can apply and blend it later. It's not something that dries super quick so you can always go in and blend it later. That's why it's easy to do this kind of like step by step. Let me just explain to you the reason why you would not go on this center section here. If you do, you are gonna get more of a kind of much more defined look. So if you want to, you can do that. But ultimately I wanna show you something which is really easy and is your kind of baseline. If you decide to go thicker or heavier or longer, then that's up to you. But I'm showing you that kind of starting position and how you can contour very easily. And I just feel like sometimes people, are, people don't know where the placement is. So the reason we do this here is because one, this is where your natural cheekbone, the shadow should be. So you're creating a shadow. This is a harsh version of the shadow because obviously we're gonna blend it out and it's gonna look like a shadow later. But ultimately this is gonna look like a shadow which then in turn makes this section at the top look like it's kind of just a bit more prominent, right? So because we've got a shadow there, this is gonna look, as I said, prominent. I was trying to think of another word, but it's just prominent. And then if you wanted to, you can add like a blush laid out or a highlighter there to make it pop even more. But ultimately, this is what we're doing here. We're creating a shadow. Okay, now that we've done that, we're gonna move on to step two. This is where we're gonna focus on the forehead or basically helping to either make it look 
kind of slimmer or just kind of making it look not as long, not as big. So it really depends on what you're trying to do here. Now, if you wanted to make your forehead look smaller because maybe it's too big that way, you would be applying the contour right up here, right? Because what that's doing is creating a shadow and actually kind of looking like your hairline is coming a little bit lower than it actually is. But we're not trying to do that here. For me, I prefer having a slightly slimmer face because my face is quite round. So I like to slim it that way rather than that way. So what we're going to be doing is applying the product on this side, but we're going to be applying it around here and here. Now I'm going to show you exactly what we do here. We want to go very close to the hairline. If you leave a gap there, it's going to look odd because the whole point of this shadow is for it to look like it's kind of going into your hairline. So what we want to do is just go there. That's pretty close. I know there's a little gap, but by the time we blend it, it's going to go in. So we're gonna do same here. See how even without that being blended, it's already basically made my forehead look smaller, like as in from that side. Whereas had I ever applied it up there, it would have made it look kind of smaller in that way. But I don't feel like I need to do that. This side is more than enough. It's gonna really help to kind of like squeeze my face together and just make it look a little bit more slimmer. Now I do see some people have kind of like, they really focus on really blending this whole area here and it looks quite dark. I wouldn't recommend that because I feel like it, is quite obvious and realistically, you still want that gap there because that's your face, right? So you still want your skin to show there. But ultimately what you're trying to do is just kind of make it just look a little bit more kind of slimmer that way. You don't want to cover it completely so it ends up looking like it's kind of bruised. It doesn't, I have seen that on some people and it just doesn't look right because they've just gone a bit OTT with the bronzer on this section here. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's personal preference, but honestly, I'm telling you, it it doesn't look good when you cover the whole area. The whole point is that it goes into the hairline. That's how makeup artists have been doing it for years and there's a reason for it. It's basically manipulating the shape of the face. It's not about creating color in certain areas that isn't naturally there. And I'm talking about not, not color, but like darkness. It isn't, you're not gonna get a shadow here all over. Do you see what I mean? That isn't natural. Whereas you, you are pretending your hairline is kind of looking like it's coming a little bit more forward. So it makes the area look smaller. If you wanted to make the whole thing look a lot smaller, like for example, you need your forehead to look smaller that way, but you also want it to look smaller that way, then I would take this from this area here all the way around, right? So that you're basically doing both of those things in one. But I would make it not so thick, right? So I'd make sure that it's, it's quite thin and then you can build up on it if you need to. Now in terms of the placement, what we were really hoping for is just basically it needs to come no lower than the brow. So the end of the brow, this is where you would kind of start from. Cause if you, the minute you go lower than the wing of the brow, you're kind of going into another territory and it's more kind of like more of the temples. You want to go a little bit higher than the temples for this whole kind of way of like doing the forehead. So moving on, let's get into step three. Now we're gonna be working on the jawline. And this is the one that I feel like most people get excited about because they want a really sharp jawline. They wanna hide that double chin. They just wanna look super snatched. And you know, I understand why, because I want that too. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. So this is really, really important because you wanna make sure your placement is correct on this. It can go very wrong in the same way that all these other places can go wrong. So what we wanna do is we wanna hold it differently. We're not holding it like like this how we have been for these other areas we actually want to hold it from beneath and the way that you hold it will change how you apply it because if you hold it like this and you try and do it under I can guarantee it's going to be harder for you and you're probably going to end up getting it in the wrong place by holding it in this way you're it's much more it trust me try it yourself go like this on one side and then hold it like this on the other side and you're gonna find it so much easier. You will get a cleaner finish and it will just glide on like butter. It's so easy for you. So what you really wanna focus on when it comes to the placement is you wanna focus on going beneath the jawline. Your jawline is this area here, right? And obviously some people are trying to make it look a little bit more prominent. But what we wanna do is get that really nice sharp finish without it looking like we've just drawn a line in there. Obviously initially when we apply it, it's gonna look like we've drawn a line, but you wanna make sure it's 
underneath because let's be honest, the only reason you can see whatever jaw that I currently have, which isn't defined, is because there's a shadow underneath, right? Because my neck goes in and that has created a shadow there. That's why you can see whatever jawline I currently have. Now what we're doing is manipulating the shape slightly, but also darkening that shadow so that it really does pop. So the same way when we did this, it made that top section here pop. That's exactly what we're doing here. We're adding that shadow here and it's making this area here pop. But what we're gonna do is adjust the line a little bit because maybe your jawline naturally is a bit rounder. What we're gonna do is straighten it up a little bit. But you wanna make sure you go beneath the jawline because if you go over it, it's gonna look wrong. Trust me, it is gonna look really bad. You want to make sure it goes underneath. That is very important. Now, what we wanna do is basically, you can either start from this area or you can start from this area. It's completely up to you. But ultimately what you wanna do is you wanna go right up there, right until the ear there. Now there are other ways of doing this, like different shapes that you can do, but I wanna keep this very simple for you guys. This is literally, this is why it's like a five step routine. Super, super easy for you guys to do. So we're gonna just draw that line here. Now you can, if you want, go all the way to under the chin there, but just bear in mind, if you were to go all the way to the end of the chin here, so that both lines meet here, what you're also doing is basically shortening this. So like that, right? So for example, if I felt like I had a really long face, I would apply it up here and apply it here and that's gonna to help to just shorten my face a little bit. So just bear in mind, if you don't want your face to look shorter and you wanna keep that kind of like, that, that length that you've got there, don't bring it all the way across here, just stop around there. So I think I'm gonna stop around there just so that you guys can see. Now I wanna go underneath the jawline, there you go. I'm doing the line a little bit thicker because I just want you guys to be able to see it. Now, obviously you can see that, right? Even from an angle like that. That is beneath my jawline because if I look straight ahead, it's not above it, it's, it's underneath. And that's another reason for holding it in that way. So we're gonna go right here. There you go. And I've stopped there, so I've left about, well, I've just left a little gap there. So it's not going all the way across, right? Now you can see there, there, it's in the same place. Also because we're holding it in that way, it is ensuring that we are actually getting it in the exact place that we want on either side so that it is symmetrical. But that one's pretty easy. I feel like once you get the hang of it, you're gonna find it pretty easy. But again, like I mentioned, it's really important to stick to certain things like the way you're holding it, you know, what, where you're applying it and you need to understand why you're applying it there. So hopefully you understand exactly why we apply it beneath the jawline because no one's gonna have a shadow up up here, you know? So you wanna make sure you do create the shadow in the right place, in the natural areas that you would be able to create a shadow in real life. So we're gonna move on now to step four. This is where we're gonna do the nose and honestly, this can go very wrong. <laughs> so please pay attention. It, I really don't want you going out like with the wrong kind of nose contour. I just don't want that for any of you guys. So what we're gonna be working on is on the bridge of the nose and the tip of the nose. I wanna explain what that is first because it's very easy to talk about nose contour but not actually understand the structure of the nose. So let me just explain. I'm just gonna hold a spatula to make it easy so I can point at things. You've got the bridge of the nose. The bridge of the nose is this section here. Let me just move to the side so that you can see. It's this section here, right? So right there. That is the bridge of the nose. Now here, this, this little bit right at the end is the tip of the nose. And then you've got the nostrils here. So tip of the nose, bridge of the nose there. Some people will have a slightly kind of like bent nose from the bridge and some people will have a slightly bent nose from the tip. Now ultimately the whole aim of contouring your nose is to create the perfect kind of shape that you want. This is not about kind of like working with your natural shape if you are struggling with a bent kind of uh, tip or bent bridge. When you are working with something like that, then you really wanna create the nose shape that you want. You're almost drawing it in so that you can create that, the shape that you want. If you don't 
have an issue with that, then I would suggest just following your natural kind of nose. But at the same time, you wanna make sure you kind of maybe slim it down a bit more because I'm assuming if you're contouring your nose, the whole point is, is that you wanna make it look a bit more smaller. I'm sure there are the odd few people that kind of like contour to make their nose look a little bit bigger. But ultimately what we're talking about is contouring the nose to make it look smaller, slimmer, or just kind of like give it that really nice kind of sharper finish to it. So what I am gonna be doing is showing you how to contour toward your nose. So we're gonna work with this same product now. Now the good thing is because it's a stick, it's pretty easy to use the edges of it. Now ultimately what we first wanna do is contour the sides of the bridge of the nose. So we're gonna be doing a line on either side here, right there. We're not gonna go all the way down to the tip because that's a separate section that we're gonna work on. So we really wanna create a symmetrical line here. So I'm gonna hold this right here and I'm gonna just do a little line there. See that little line? Now I've got it on one side, that's fine. It's always harder trying to do it on the other side because you're trying to basically make it look symmetrical. Now I wanna explain something once I've done this line to you. So let me just get this done. I always do that one a little bit slower because I feel like it's always harder to get that line straight. Okay, so before I move on to the next kind of part, which is the tip, I just wanna to explain to you that my aim here was to draw a line on either side, but bring it a bit closer together because I wanna really kind of make that bridge of the nose a bit slimmer. So what we're doing is creating that kind of like shadow there. You've got to make sure that the width all the way down is the same. If you draw these two lines and when you finish, it ends up looking like it's going like that as opposed to that, then what you're doing is you're making your nose look like that. So it will look like it goes wider at the end. So the whole point is to make sure that the width is the same all the way down. Now your width can be a little bit more than me. I've done it quite thin, but I like it that way. Way. but if you want it to kind of like look a little bit wider for example because maybe you have a very very thinner nose then you would make more of a gap there and that's going to help to make it look a little bit bigger but ultimately you want to make sure the rule is make sure that the width is the same all the way down we're going to do the tip of the nose and this is really easy all we're going to do is a little v we're literally going to work right here on the tip do a little v again how big this is determines how big the tip of your nose is gonna look. So we're gonna do a little V there. There you go. Now, I just wanna use my finger to just make it into a proper V. There you go. Cause I feel like it was looking a bit separated. That is how I'm gonna make the tip of my nose look smaller. So it's almost like a little arrow, right? So the bigger this V is, the more space there is in the middle of that V, the bigger the tip of your nose is gonna look. The less space there is, the smaller it is, the smaller the tip of your nose is gonna look. That is basically how you would contour your nose. Moving on to step five. Now this is where you wanna make sure you get the right brushes to use for this. Now I'm gonna be using a couple. I'm gonna be using a slightly bigger brush on the bigger areas, and then a slightly smaller one on the smaller areas, such as the nose. Now the big brush that I'm gonna be using is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit brush. It's got two sides to it. One is slightly more kind of like domed, and the other is a little bit more kind of uh, just rounded and flatter, and I just feel like it's a good size for the face. First off, we're gonna start with the cheekbones. We're gonna work our way through through the same order that we applied everything. So this is where I'm gonna be using the slightly rounder side and I'm basically gonna just kind of like press over. I'm not focused on going like that because I don't want it to kind of like start moving everything around. I just wanna press, like press over it in the exact same spot, by the way, that I have applied it. I'm not going around it, I'm not making it bigger, nothing like that. See how easily that has blended in? Honestly, this is the easiest thing to do. It's just so easy. So as you can see, that's done. We're gonna do the other side here. There you go. All you're doing is pressing. You're just basically going like that, like that. 
and that's why I love this product and I also love this brush to do it with because it's just honestly super super easy okay next we did the forehead so what we're going to be doing here is using the same side but we're going to be going into the hairline so this is where we are going to drag because we're not dragging over the face we're kind of dragging into the hairline to just create that slight shadow there See how easy that was? Guys, this is literally the easiest contour you're ever gonna do in your life if you use these products and these brushes, like the tools and the actual product. So again, into the hairline. See how subtle that difference is, but it still has kind of given us that warmth there and we've got the cheekbones, as you can see, it's warmed up the perimeter of the face so it just looks a little bit slimmer. Now, when you're working on the jawline here, you wanna drag again, but you're gonna hold the brush in the same way that you actually held the stick. So we're gonna hold it like this as opposed to this. We're gonna hold it like that, right? And this is where we're gonna drag into the neck because we want that shadow to just blend in. So what we're gonna do here is just blend that down And you're gonna see how this just basically creates a shadow. There you go, look at that. That is insane, right? It is pretty insane how you can just create the most amazing shadow there. Like, look how snatched that is. So moving on to the other side. Go down. It should never look like there's just a line there. Like you will not be able to tell, okay, she's drawn a line in because it's blending into the neck. So it looks a lot more kind of like, it looks like a natural shadow and it's just making your jawline look so, so sharp. So now that we've done that, we wanna move on to the nose where we're gonna use a smaller brush. I'm gonna use the BK Beauty 203 brush. It's like an eyeshadow brush. I think like a flat traditional eyeshadow brush is the best option for this because it really does just fit perfectly for the nose. Now, the first thing we wanna do is blend the area where we've applied it on the bridge of the nose. So what we're gonna be doing here, we're gonna hold the brush like this. We're gonna go here and we're gonna just drag down towards the side, right, right there. And again, if you use the right kind of like bronzing or contour stick, it's gonna honestly sculpt so well and be so easy to blend. See how easily that's just gone down, it's created a shadow. We're gonna do the same on this side. I feel like when people are using creams, a lot of the time what they do is just, they just go like that. I do that with a powder because it makes sense. But with a cream, you honestly need to really take it in the direction it needs to go because it's gonna, it's gonna stay there. It's not a powder where you have to apply it and blend it all at the same time. This is application and then blending. So now what we're gonna do is use the tip and we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take that down towards the sides and honestly, that is it. Look how quick, look how that has just made my nose look so much smaller, it's crazy. That is basically how you will contour your face in five easy steps. So easy, once you get the hang of it, it's gonna become quicker and quicker for you. I can't wait for you guys to actually try this because I feel like if you follow this routine, once you've done your base and everything, it's gonna honestly be a game changer for you. If you wanted to at this point, you could go over with an ultra, ultra light coverage foundation or like a skin tint on top of this so if you want to do this before your foundation you can but if you are going to do that that would be called underpainting which means that the coverage that you apply on top with a foundation needs to be the lightest coverage in order for this to still show through and just give that soft focus effect hopefully this has shown you exactly how you can contour and I really hope that it's been made it kind of like super easy for you as well it's very beginner friendly but again perfect for people who already know how to apply makeup who are confident in it but maybe just want a bit of a change in terms of how you apply and also just maybe a little bit of a refresher for you too. Don't forget I do have an online publication called the Beauty Breakfast Club which is an online publication covering mainly beauty but a bit of everything lifestyle health hot topics everything is written by me it's a community that I would love you to join there are two versions of subscription one is free which gives you access to some of the site and the other is paid which is the equivalent of only getting one coffee a month and what that does is give you access to the whole site 
write an extra newsletter every week. By the way, I write everything myself. And also a little chat room where we can chat. You can ask any questions that you may have. And I think it's a pretty cool community that we're growing over there. I would love you guys to be part of it. And I have another YouTube channel, which is primarily my podcast, which I host with my husband. It's very raw, very relatable. I think you're gonna enjoy it. And a few vlogs over there too. So if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos and I will see you next time.